Let's get right into it. So this particular caprice will allow me to talk a little bit about spiccato with its peppery and zappy quality. Spiccato can, in a way, encompass a lot of subtly different strokes along a certain continuum, depending on the speed and character that we aim to achieve. There also could be a distinction made between a more active spiccato, where there's more control in the bow arm for each individual stroke, and a more passive spiccato, where the bow is encouraged to bounce on its own. Today I'll focus on the more active variety as demonstrated with the beginning of this caprice and share some exercises reinforcing consistent and efficient articulation as a foundation for any kind of short stroke along that continuum, as well as developing the ability to transition between any of them as fluidly as possible. It's essential, first of all, to be aware of the relationship between the arm and the wrist slash fingers, that there's always smaller motions at work within a bigger, more overall motion. All right, starting with a very slow bow speed and with as minimal motion in the arm as possible, using the wrist and fingers, bite and keep the contact of the bow with the string. In other words, stay there and don't release too quickly. When the arm gets far enough, we could then let the wrist and fingers go with as clean a release as possible. The key is to get used to this so that it becomes something that we really don't need to think about. Having started with this exercise in only one direction, we could then move to up, down, up, down. And then subsequently covering the full length of the bow. As we gradually speed up the tempo, we could then stop exaggerating and thinking too much about the small motions here and let the momentum of the bigger motion lead so that the wrist and fingers follow in a supple and more relaxed manner. This way of working could directly benefit passages such as this one from the first movement of Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Or even the last movement, Les Furies, from Isaïe's Valen Sonata No. 2. The active awareness gained in the wrist and fingers through these exercises also forms a very good foundation for much faster passages, such as this one from Saint-Saëns' Introduction in Rondo Capriccioso, where the nature of the spiccato becomes more passive. Thank you. 
I'll elaborate a little more on the subject of passive spiccato in the next episode. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching as always, and feel free to like, subscribe, and to share this video if you found it useful. And feel free to leave any questions you might have in the comments below. Cheers.